too complicated. You got to do an extra five pages of it's it, I don't have time to train you and we'll do this one step at a time. So until I return, uh, unless for some reason you get a lot of business and you all of a sudden get good at this like fast and you won't get enough shipments while I'm gone to get good enough. But the next step will be to teach you how to do packages because that requires additional paperwork and it also gets really tricky in this area and what to deny and what to do if you're not sure it gets really complicated so again that is lowshiprate.com the other one that I used as reference of course Google that allowed me to get the wrong zip code I, I also showed you quickly how to realize it's how to verify that it's correct or realize it's wrong and this uh, that wrong zip code from Google, by the way, is the first time that's ever happened to me. And then this is dct.dhl.com. That's going to help you verify the address. And the second step, you verify the address with the help of Google and dct.dhl.com. And you keep this on your phone and uh, right here. And I'll go ahead and uh, I'll do another one. Uh, let, let me do, because I did one with a. Uh, I, I told you in this uh, in trading, I did Punta Cana. Punta Cana is remote area. So watch what I'm going to do. Santo. No, I didn't want to do that. Dominican. Dominican, Dominican Republic. Look at that, Dominican Republic. I think I got a spelling error. There it is. No, I didn't. I got it right. So all that time, I, you know, you might have a faster phone than me, and it'll find it faster. But here's where Dominican Republic starts. So that is remote. This is remote. So we're going to go and find Punta Cana. Now, I'm doing Punta Cana from memory, and I know where Punta Cana is on a map. So unless they updated and somehow decided to give a generous gift to the people of Punta Cana, Punta Cana is going to be on this list. And uh, and it's not. I, I I can't believe it's not. But it really isn't, huh? So that would allow you to ship it to Punta Cana without the remote access fee. Now Punta Cana used to be on there, so. So the the bottom line is that's going to tell you you don't have to add the the uh, remote access fee, and if DHL charges me in the invoice, then I refer to that sheet, which is the ultimate sheet, and then I win the dispute. Punta Punta Cana Punta Cana. Look at that. Uh, you know, maybe there's a, a new airport down there and, and maybe the update of the 2018 sheet, you know, it's not. So just because uh, I said it was remote, my experience ends up being useless here because it's not. So let me try Higue. Higue, H-I-G-U-E-Y, G. Yeah, they must have an airport that they're using down there. So, so that's uh, the two that I thought would be helpful examples from memory proved not to be. So it'd be great if I recognized one of these. And uh, 
and part of the way the reason they're not recognizable is they're not you know they they're remote i mean they're they're not famous they're out of the way they are not near airports this is polo that's also a I wanted to choose more carefully because a lot of the cities in Dominican Republic have the same name in multiple places. So let me do this again. Uh, I'm going to say Polo Dominican Republic. Wouldn't that be cool? Look at that. Municipality. and So this, according to the 2018 final word, DHL remote areas. Yeah, and that's why. All this area is remote. Seems relatively close to Santo Domingo. But there's another place here. Oswa used to be remote. Uh... But anyway, so that's Polo. As you can see, I mean, you zoom in. This is probably mountainous. And look at that. It's a small village surrounded by, you know, it's probably not even farms. It's probably, you know, jungle. So this is certainly remote. Now, just as long as I'm doing this, I just, I kind of want to, you know, my memory is proving to be, of no use here because the sheet has been updated. So let me see if Oswa plays out because Oswa was kind of a surprise to me. It seems relatively close to Santo Domingo. And yet, um, it's remote. There it is, Oswa. Now, why the et de Compostela? That's, it's hard to, there's really no experience that can get you to understand that. But these Spanish words, in modern times, tend to get chopped. So uh, Santiago de los Caballeros is also known as Santiago. You have that in your country with Delhi and New Delhi. Uh, so it's not too much of a surprise. But sometimes you think it's a simple shortening, and it turns out to be um, more meaningful than that. So... I'm going to do one other thing here that capital Han Duras capital helping Han Duras capital Han Duras Tegucigalpa now Vidya I know you're an educated guy and you your your interests are very broad so in no way should you be insulted by me saying this. I have a feeling the names that are in modern times from the native people of the Americas are mostly unfamiliar to you. I just can't imagine why you would ever study them or come across them by chance. So you'll see a lot of that. You know, the Spanish names San Pedro Sula will not seem foreign to you. But that's the capital, Tegucigalpa, and that is a native Central American uh, word. And just for reference, um, this is Cleveland, Ohio. This is my childhood. And there it is, Cuyahoga River. I, I, uh, my birthplace is like three miles from where this river this lake up here is, is Lake Erie. I don't know why it doesn't say that. Lake Erie. And this is Cuyahoga River. And this is another Native North American uh, name. Of course, the history goes with Christopher Columbus finding these people and calling them Indians. So we commonly call them Indians, but it's not the most precise <coughs> way to describe uh, the people who descended from the Native North American, Native Central Americans, Native Caribbean people or native south americans so uh but these are some of the names that you will come across a lot of them especially in peru especially in uh central america especially in uh 
Bolivia, uh, uh, Ecuador, and not so much in Colombia. Uh, I can't, off the top of my head, I can't think of any other. So that might be kind of fun. Uh, you're not likely to know how to pronounce them. I, I think it's probably, I mean, how could you see Tegucigalpa for the first time and even get close? How do you say Tegucigalpa? Maybe with your multilingual life, this will not seem clumsy to you, but it sure does to me. Sure is to me. Uh, El Salvador is a place we ship to also. And that would be, that would be, uh, that's a difference between Esperanza and Adam. Esperanza ships to El Salvador. And I don't think Adam does, uh, or I don't think he has yet, or if he does, he hasn't done a lot of it. But Esperanza does a lot of Mexico, and Adam does a lot of Mexico. Mexico is very easy because they have five-digit postal codes, and the Mexicans show up with the postal codes. And they're also very helpful in helping you gap between what they know and what you need to know. They help you make the labels. The Mexicans are very helpful. Um, that's it, amigo. Again, Esperanza wants to do a package. Say lo siento, amiga. This has been Tom Duty, middle-aged American, living in New Jersey, near the Lincoln Tunnel. If you were to visit my website, you would type Howdy Duty into Google. You'll find the correct spelling of the famous puppet. You then combine Tom Duty and a Google search for my site. Thank you for listening. Have a good day, good evening, a restful night. Sleep. It'd be fun if uh, the DHL. Ciao. It'd be fun if Google chose that as the thumbnail. Ciao.